My name is Alex. I reside in Florida. I've been taught if you do something, you do it with passion. So with reptiles, I've been explaining that these so-called deadly creatures aren't that at all. If they're really so deadly, then I guess I'm willing to die to disprove it. It's that important to me. For several years I've scoured everywhere in Florida looking for the worst stinging insects. It's my mission to catalog every stinging insect in Florida. And let me say what a journey has been. I've been stung by two dozen different insects all in an attempt to prove what I believe is true. Many of these insects several times. I faced off with some of the most painfully stinging insects. While it is true, so many of the animals you have the potential to encounter here in Florida Ooh. may cause harm, Without a doubt, this pain, is absolutely but mostly fear. just fear. I, can't do this I also believe that fear that is inside in many people is not necessary. And when I'm done with this, feel the sting. Fear not. Oh gosh. Oh, her sting was lodged in my heart. As a child, I think just about everybody's fascinated with animals. But as a child, every insect is like just a bug. You just call them bugs, right? I took this photograph 10 years ago. This is like the early days of Facebook. I just noticed how different this wasp was. I didn't know what that would actually turn into for me. I began seeing and realizing the differences between all of these different insects and became extremely fascinated with the stinging ones. In December 2018, I released a video saying Florida's Executioner Wasp Revealed. I have got wind that the infamous Executioner Wasp actually had another twin brother. I was well on my way to discovering all the different stinging insects here in Florida and testing their stings. In that very same video, I mentioned very notable insects that I had planned on encountering here in Florida. And while the insect in the title took me another two years, it wasn't until just last year that I finally spotted and captured my very own Palestis Major, also known as Florida's Executioner Wasp. In that same video, I had mentioned the largest wasp that you can find here in Florida. Yes, it's this one right here. This is the Cicada Killer, a very large stinging wasp species. I thought for sure last year was the year I'd capture this. I only captured this video. A really good video of one actually subduing and killing a cicada. But I was too slow and this wasp flew away before I even had a chance. Finally, just this year, this very odd tree I spotted with some of the most unique orange flowers was riddled with different wasp and insect species. But most notably, I spotted this one. Several of this one, the Eastern Cicada Killer. A photograph I took 10 years ago that I would have never thought could have led into a journey to gain more knowledge about this wasp species and ultimately to become one of the most educated on this wasp species. The Eastern Cicada Killer is known for being large, but it is also known for being one of the most docile and friendly wasp species out there. I think by the end of this you'll believe me. My name is Alex, I'm the host of The Great Outdoors. Inside of my capsule I have one of two of the largest wasp species that you can find here in Florida. This is, is the Eastern Cicada Killer. It is a large parasitoid wasp that feeds primarily on cicadas. It'll kill a cicada, drag it down into its burrow, and plant an egg on it, and then the egg will ultimately become a new cicada killer wasp, and the life cycle goes on. Well, yes, just last year I'd seen several cicada killer wasps, but they had no intentions to come close enough for me to capture them, especially without a net. Before I even had a real chance to capture one of these few cicada killer wasps I spotted, I found out just how short their life cycle really is. Emerging in June or early July and they die off by September or October, they are only present in a given area for 60 to 75 days. I lost my window, giving another person who went into sting retirement an opportunity, and he took it. But a main point was missed, giving me the king of the cow killer sting an opportunity to present. The largest wasp in Florida is frequently attacked by another Animal stinging kingdom. insect, this another parasitic wasp, Daisy Mutella, Daisy Mutella oxidentalis, also known as the cow, the cow killer. killer. The cow killer will go right down into the cicada killer's burrow. The female flightless cow killer lays an egg into the cicada killer's burrow. The egg waits until the cicada killer's wasp pupates. It allows it to consume the entire cicada, and then the cow killer kills the pupa, like a crazy turn of events. 
But if I'm to present some crazy turn of events, I want to be sure I present them in the right sequence. People often think of animals as reactive creatures. However, something as simple as a wasp exhibits premeditated intention. Isn't that a human attribute? For this, we need to go back to the photo I took 10 years ago. The cicada killer paralyzed the cicada and was climbing a tree. While the cicada killer larva feeds on cicadas, the adult cicada killer is far more likely to be doing what this video shows consuming nectar and tree sap for their dietary needs. That cicada in the photo was climbing up a tree so it could glide closer to its burrow to ensure its babies survive. But here's the most important part about making a video about the cicada killer, presenting the sequence of events that take place in the proper order. The young adult cicadas emerge from their burrows in early June or July. It's seeking the oh so precious nectar and sap to nourish its flights to find a mate. Then male cicada killers compete for rights to mate with selected females. The victor of these mating competitions implants his genes into the selected female. After mating is successfully completed, the female cicada killer with her fertilized eggs searches for the right area to make a burrow. Proportionally, this burrow can be pretty deep and consisting of many chambers. With her burrow completed, she begins to hunt for cicadas. When she successfully paralyzes a cicada, She'll climb a tree in order to fly closer to her already pre-designed burrows. She'll place one to three different cicadas in each burrow and then plant only one egg into each chamber of her burrow. Each egg gets its own chamber, ensuring better survival rates. The multiple chambers is important because she knows there's another predator out there lurking. And that's where the cow killer fits into this puzzle. This is the Eastern Cicada Killer. A wasp with such a large stinger it's only natural for us to wonder how painful it actually is. So I will conduct this experiment okay. to show you it, it what the cicada killer stinger agitated. actually okay. feels like. Okay. Wow, that's a female. That is a female. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous now. It has a huge stinger. Okay. Well, if you were wondering whether it was a male or female, you will see a very large stinger protruding from its abdomen. And uh, certainly, God, that's a thick stinger too. Whew. I'm not gonna lie, this one is definitely one of the most intimidating wasp species I've ever taken the sting from. I'm not looking forward to this, but it's been on my list of stings I have to receive. So let's go ahead and place our forearm right here and just hope it's not as bad as it looks. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three. Hasn't got penetration. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Oh, yeah. ah! It embedded. It went deep. Okay, that was definitely, definitely a freaking sting. Whew. All right. That's worse than they said it was going to be. I'm surprised at the pain on that one. Um, not scared of this wasp so much as far as handling. Just scared of the sting because it looks so intimidating. That stinger is huge. Bigger than a hypodermic needle. Uh, one of the thickest stingers I've ever seen. Um, just waiting to see what's going to... I already see some redness. Is that... God. So, at this juncture... Let's release the cicada killer into the wild so it can continue on and live its life cycle. I feel tingling already starting and as soon as uh, I see the first signs of a whelp, I'll mark it, we'll monitor the sting's progress. But uh, I'm excited. I've been waiting for this release, I'm sorry, this sting for a long time. It's been three years ago that I first mentioned the cicada killer. and. Uh, Surprisingly, that's actually worse than I expected, but not the worst thing I've ever taken so far. It's no secret by now I'm compiling a list of insects. I'm going to put Florida to the test. Here's a few very notable insects that I may regret. The Sphex itchinominus, the golden dirt dauber. Florida's largest wasp, the eastern cicada killer. The bald-faced hornet. I saw a huge hive and I went too close to inspect. That's a pain I'll never forget. 
Let's go ahead and release it. And I want to show you just how unscared of this wasp I actually am. I will just simply release it, let it crawl on my hand if it doesn't just immediately fly off. And uh, it'll be on its way. So there it is. The Eastern Cicada Killer, it's gone. There it went. That was great. We got a good release on that one. Um, I want to say there's blood coming to the surface right here. Literally blood coming to the surface. It appears as though it definitely tagged me more than once, but that one went deep. That's a pain I'll never forget. The European hornet, an invasive species. The bumblebee is Florida's largest bee species. Been stung firsthand as a kid, and I'm sure that's a sting that needs further documenting. Who could forget about Florida's bark scorpion? The bark scorpion in Arizona is potentially a deadly specimen. There is one wasp species I'm very actively seeking. It's a wasp that, after I researched it, really got me thinking. Here's what one of my subscribers mentioned. Perhaps you could try to find Palesti's major nest. They are so close to Palesti's carnifax that they are almost indistinguishable. That's the executioner wasp. And they reside in Florida. I assure you I've had several requests for this specimen. I have quite a different story. I love Schmidt and his creation the sting pain index. However, I'm from Florida and there's a lot of gaps. I'm the Florida wildlife guy. I seek the insects where little explanation exists. I receive a sting and try to explain it. This all started when I first saw Coyote begin his climb. He was stung by the cow killer and then so was I. We both were stung by the yellow jacket and oddly, in both instances, we had quite different reactions. He climbed Schmidt's pain sting index and I'm creating something a little different. I'm starting from scratch with only two exceptions, the Metricus wasp and the yellow jacket. Those are the two specimens on the index. Schmidt called the Metricus wasp a three out of four. That's the same ranking as the cow killer, just a little shorter duration. The executioner wasp is Palestis carnifax, and Palestis major is almost indistinguishable from it. Little is known about the executioner wasp, except for the experience Kyrie Peterson presented. But here's what I know about Palestis major. There are three different active peptides in their venom. That means there are three different possible reactions I can be looking forward to then. Schmidt said he believed that paper wasp or social wasp develop a more aggressive sting because their need to protect their entire colony. Predators would just come at them a lot harder. So they developed an even more intense sting. This is Schmidt's hypothesis. Oddly, a hypothesis Brave Wilderness never mentioned. I guess they're just testing Coyote Peterson's braveness? I like those amazing reactions, but things we're doing are just quite different. I'm testing Schmidt's hypothesis as well as Florida's dangerous insects. I'm the Florida wildlife guy. This world is full of different species. One day we'll fully understand the art of sting. As you all know, I've been actively seeking Palestis Major and I've drove miles and miles looking for it. In fact, I actually found a website on Google that allowed me to pinpoint different photographs that were taken of Palestis Major. These are some of the photographs here. I actually was able to track it down to the exact location where these specimens were spotted. I went to the exact pond where Palestis Major was identified before, but I don't think that they were around at this time in the season. A little late in the season for most wasp species. 